Good morning, family. Welcome to Morning Heart Devotion with Dr. Chong Shik Yong, brought to you by our Heavenly Parents Holy Community. Let's begin by greeting our Heavenly Parents and True Parents. Chunjin Champumonimke Chongbe Aro. Now for our family pledge, Kajong Mengse. Il Chaneo Guk Juin. 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 번향 땅을 찾아 번연의 창조의 상인 지상 천국과 천상 천국을 창건할 것을 맹세하나이다. 이 천혜국 주인 우리 가정은 참 사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님과 참 부모님을 모시어 천주의 대표적 가정이 되며 중심적 가정이 되어 가정에서는 효자, 국계에서는 중심, 세계에서는 성인, 천주에서는 성자의 가정의 도리를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 3. 천혜국 주인, 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 4대 심정권과 3대 왕권과 광족권을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 4. 천혜극 주인, 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님의 창조의 상인 천주대 가족을 형성하여 자유와 평화와 통일과 행복의 세계를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 5. 천혜극 주인, 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 매일 주체적 천상세계와 대상적 지상세계의 통일을 향해 전진적 발전을 촉진화할 것을 맹세하나이다. 6. 천혜극 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님과 참부모님의 대신 가정으로서 천운을 움직이는 가정이 되어 하늘의 축복을 주변에 연결시키는 가정을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 7. 천혜극 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 본연의 혈통과 연결된 위하는 생활을 통하여 신정문화 세계를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 8. 천혜극 주인, 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 천혜극 시대를 맞이하여 절대 신앙, 절대 사랑, 절대 복종으로 신인의 일체 이상을 이루어 지상 천국과 천상 천국의 해방권과 석방권을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. To open us up with prayer, I'd like to invite up uh, Mr. Noah Ross. Would you pray for us this morning? Let's pray. Good morning, our loving Heavenly Parent. Heavenly Parent, we're so grateful to greet you at the beginning of this new and wonderful day, to be alive and to be with you, and to be able to enter the world of your heart in this morning heart devotion. Heavenly Parent, we really want to be a comfort to you and to feel your presence each moment of our day. Please come down and be upon the lives and hearts of each of our brothers and sisters today. Heal us, strengthen us, and fill us with your Holy Spirit. And more importantly, we pray, Heavenly Parent, for our nation, that you will heal it as well, and our world. We know how much you are trying so much to bring your heart and your Holy Spirit to the lives of every person. We pray for all the people we meet each day, that you will touch them. We pray, Father, for our true parents especially. Bless our true father and true mother, especially now mother working so hard in the seven-year course. Please bring the miracles to happen. We know that with your holy power it can happen. We speak through our Dr. Young this morning. Pray that he will touch our hearts today, leading us and guiding us as our elder brother to the world where you live, to share with you, to comfort you, the world of your heavenly kingdom. Please guide us this morning. Help us to bring you joy and happiness. And we pray, Father, for a great and meaningful day today. 
Guide us, strengthen us, be with us. And we pray, Father, for your great blessing this, this morning. Oh, for this, in my name, Noel Ross, of the Ross West Central family. Adieu. Adieu. Thank you Adieu. very much, Reverend Noah Ross. I hope your leg already completely recovered. I miss you. Someday I'd like to go to your home to see your leg. Please take, take care. Thank you for visiting me, Dr. Young. It's really a blessing. I'm very moved by it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you can almost just show your leg here in front of, but not in front of all of us, maybe. <laughs> well, thank you, Uncle Noah, for that prayer. Uh, let's not go into our breakouts and share our appreciations this morning with our family.
Slack family. Hope you enjoyed your breakout. Uh, to share first, I'd like to invite up uh, Mrs. Nobuko P. Muller. Can you share first, please? Hi, good morning. <laughs> okay. Um, today, actually, I said to Mihan, I'm grateful to Reverend Yon who ordered us to do the 100, day, 100 times of divine principle reading. <laughs> and uh, it was beyond my actually uh, concept. I never thought I would do it. <laughs> but anyway, actually, uh, when I started to do it every day, I decided to do it with, uh, I, I eat three meals. So before three meals, I would do it at least 40 pages of divine principle reading. Wow, <laughs> wow, amazing. So when I did it, I, you know, I make sure I love God more than anything else. I tried <laughs> and actually the benefit of doing it is so deep. And I never thought, you know, hundred times I will do the same thing as over and over, but actually that, I needed so much, and that's what I realized. That. So I, I'm, I didn't finish yet, so I didn't want to talk about it. But um, anyway, <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so many people ask me why we are doing hundred times. Hundred times means, you know, means like a com number of the completion. 100% ID, that kind of the like offering condition, at least, uh, you know, even one hour book, three hour book, when you make it and then you can have uh, incredible benefit from spiritual world actually. And then please, at least you try one hour book 100 times and then you can get the feeling about it. Very, very important. Thank you, Nobuko san, for your such a uh, practice. Kamsahamnida. Yes, thank you. And I love that technique of doing it before breakfast because then you create urgency each day. It's, uh, sometimes it's hard to continue. I started, but I didn't finish, so I need <laughs> to continue. Okay, next, uh, can I invite up Jim and Patrick Stenard? Can you share next, please? Uh, yeah. Good morning. Uh, mm. Yeah, hi, good morning, Dr. Young, everyone. Um, yeah, I was telling Milhan uh, at my work situation, you know, um, it's always nice to have a harmonious situation in where you work, but that's not always where the case where I work. So I, I'm uh, currently I'm working 12 hour days, like three 12 hour days a, a week. And um, so God has given me a chance to grow my heart. <laughs> the people I, I work with are, are a lot younger and, you know, from a different part of the world and you don't really understand them completely and they don't understand you, but um, I'm feeling I'm able to put, you know, Dr. Young's, you know, uh, all these lessons about loving, unconditional love and serving into practice and it's, and it's, it's working out. <laughs> Um, you know, great, great, working out, great. It's working out. I, you know, I'm praying, and um, and I'm, you know, I'm able to turn some people around. That it, you know, so it's it's a big, uh, big accomplishment. Mm, thank you so much. How about Patrick. <laughs> Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm grateful to have been at BCFS BCSF this past weekend. Um, it was uh, great to play volleyball for like seven hours the first day. Um, I think we played like 11 games total. Um, and I was like with like a neat team that I never played with before. Um, but like, you know, we, tr we tried to work together and uh, have like a lot of team spirit. And I, I really appreciated that. Um, and um, uh, we still like played like very well, despite like being very new. We like won four games. Um, we lost seven, but like we still had a good enough record to qualify for the next day. Um, next day we got eliminated in the first round, but it was still really fun. Um, and, and I got to help with like, uh, registration. Um, uh, so that was nice to like, you know, welcome everyone and like meet people at the front. Um, 
I almost, I think I almost charged Dr. Yang for to, to come in. I was like embarrassed. I was like, oh, no, I can't charge Dr. Yang. Um, so <laughs> yeah, I was so happy to see you yesterday, Patrick. Happy to see you too, Dr. Yeah, oh, that's great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, you're great, Patrick. And uh, you happily charged me and my family. That's fine. That's good. That's good practice. It's my, my blessing to give. Absolutely. All right. Uh, thank you for sharing, Mr. Nard family. And uh, very excited to welcome up Dr. Young this morning to share about the most beautiful flowers of Korea, the little angels. So let's welcome up Dr. Young for our morning heart devotion. <clears throat> Good morning, good morning, my dear brothers and sisters, clergy and ambassador for peace. 안녕하십니까? Yesterday I participated PCSF program at UTS. I met so many second generation and our first generation. Wow, it was really, really beautiful. But I could not have a photos, so I could not share today. I'd like to show you tomorrow. So it was really very much fun and, uh, and I'm really glad to see each one of the, our brothers and sisters. Uh, today, I'd like to talk about the most beautiful flowers of Korea, the little angels. So I'd like to invite Heavenly Honey, please read. The first time people hear the little angels sing, they are astonished. They feel swept up in a beautiful wave of love and harmony. I hear comments like these all the time. To me, it sounds like the voices of angels. And if one person expresses such admiration, the next will pour out even more praise. What I am listening to is not a song. It is a happy chorus that brings rain to a parched soul. If we were to capture the distinctive feature of the unification movement in one phrase, it would be the culture of filial heart. Filial heart, for which I coined the Korean word yojung, signifies sincere devotion and love toward our heavenly parent. Heart, for which my husband coined the Korean word, Shimjung, is the essence of beauty and original root of love. It is beauty that stimulates love to surge forth eternally. The culture of heart transcends time and space. In the world where God's will has been realized, a pure and immaculate culture of heart will flow forth like a river and waft like a breeze through all forms of artistic creativity. As Jesus said of the little children, the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. A child sleeping peacefully is the epitome of peace. A child's innocent smile clearly illustrates what happiness is. A child's voice is gentle, but it opens the door to the heart, reconciles strangers, and expresses happiness and peace. It is the power of the innocent voices of children joined in song that led my husband and I to found the Little Angels of Korea a children's folk dance and singing troupe. During the Korean War, I saw many talented artists who were poor and homeless, seeking refuge and unable to display their work. During this time of Korea's post-war poverty, few people believed in the power of music and dance. No one even listened when my husband and I talked about culture and the arts. All they did was shake their heads and say, it's difficult just finding enough to eat. Don't waste your time thinking about culture. But in my view, culture is not a luxury. 
It is a life essential. For 5,000 years, the Korean people refined culture as a part of everyday life. We are a people of the arts. The Korean culture is unique and beautiful. Even though some of it was lost during the deprivations of the 20th century. During my school days, one of my favorite pastimes was drawing. I even thought of becoming an artist. Instead of investing in that dream on a personal level, I helped bring the exceptional beauty of Korean culture onto the world stage. Thank you, Heavenly Honey. So the mother said if we were to capture the distinctive uh, feature of unification movement in one phrase, it would be the culture of filial heart. Filial heart for which I coined the Korean word hyo jung. Hyo means uh, filial, jung means heart, signifies sincere devotion, attendance, and love toward our heavenly parents. Then let's learn, let's learn what the Father has said in more detail about a culture of heart by focusing on the number seven of the family pledge. Heavenly honey, uh, okay. So today's word uh, regarding the building a wall of culture of heart today, True Mother talking about. So let's study based upon our true father's word. Building a world of a culture of heart that is connected to the original lineage. The seventh part is our family, the owner of Chanogok, pledges through living for the sake of others to perfect the world based on the culture of heart, which is rooted in the original lineage by centering on true love. In our path of faith, the most important point is not to defile the original lineage. That means that your descendants should not stain their lineage in the same way as Adam and Eve did when they fell. This is why we say our family pledges to perfect the world based on the culture of heart which is rooted in the original lineage, the world of God's heart, the world in heaven, the world on earth, and the world of true parents' heart are all one. Thank you, Heavenly Honey. In our, uh, in our past, our faith, the most important point is not to defile the original lineage. Father, many times you're talking about. When we're talking about the culture of heart, he said, this one needs to connect to the original God's blood lineage. Without connecting the original blood lineage, we cannot talk about building a wall of culture of heart. Father said, a fallen culture is a culture centered on selfishness and free sex. It is a culture that worships to owners. To engage in free sex is to worship to owners in your heart. To have opposing heart is to, to fall. It is a fall that our body serves two minds. Sometimes it serves God and sometimes it serves Satan. The original mind serves God and the evil mind serves Satan. It is like a woman serving two men. We, we worship two owner. That is the fall. Do you understand what I mean? You know, any human being, we are adulterous. Why we are adulterous? Even though not directly related to fornication or chapter two, why human beings are adulterous? Because we worship to own us. Sometimes we worship God. Sometimes we worship Satan. Sometimes we worship our original mind. 
Sometimes we worship our evil mind. So original man, original human being only worship one owner. But our, we have two minds, evil mind and original mind. That's why any, any human being, as long as you have two minds, you worship two owners. It means what? You are adulterous. You are adulterous. Owner, yeah, if you have only one owner, and then you worship only one owner. That's why you and me, any human being, as long as we have two minds, we are adulterous. We are dangerous anytime make reciprocal base with Satan, sometimes with God. That's why we are not pure. So Father talking about here, building a wall of a culture of a heart that is connected to original lineage, only one mind, only one heart, only one mindset. And then God, the, God, the, the, the culture of a heart begins from only one heart, centering on one ownership. This is a very, very important point of what we're talking about. Therefore, to build a culture of a heart is to create a culture that worships one or owner, centering on God's royal family blood lineage. Our only owner is God. We should create a culture of the shojong, centering on one owner only. Thus, we must not stain our lineage again as Adam and Eve stained the, uh, their, theirs. According to True Father's word, fallen human beings are reborn through the uh, blessing and God's lineage is established after the minimum of the three generations. A culture built from the, the lineage of God's royal family is a culture of the wall of a heart. The wall of a culture of a heart is a wall of God's heart. The wall in heaven, the wall on earth, the wall of a true parents' heart are all one centering on God's heart. That's why when we're talking about the wall of culture of heart, important thing is centering on pure blood lineage. Centering on pure blood lineage without keeping pure blood lineage. What are you talking about? Culture of heart. Only one heart. Only one mindset. Only one owner. That's why our movement really, really try to build a world of culture of heart centering on God's pure blood lineage. But Satan, Satan's culture is very much self-centeredness, very much selfish, very much what that materialistic, very much free sexual, free sexual culture. <sighs> Everywhere, you know, occupied by the spirit of the fornication. Adulterous spirit. Adulterous culture is a satanic culture. That's why, you know, to build a world of culture of heart, most important thing is keeping absolute purity, which is original God's blood lineage. Okay, continue, please. I have the world of a culture of heart can connect the eight stages of heaven. Peace message 14, section 7. That is why we say that our family pledges to perfect the world based on the culture of heart. This is our ideal. The culture should not be two, but one. The cultures of the fallen world are complex and varied. Without establishing the world based on the culture of heart, there is no way for us to connect to heaven on all levels, from the individual to the family, tribe, people, nation, world, and eternal world. 
Without that heart, the indiv individual, family, and tribe cannot be connected. Without a world based on the culture of heart, there is no way for us to make connections from the individual up to the cosmos. The world thus far, thus far has been going up and down in a zigzag fashion. And that is why it has not yet been able to reach the final destination, even after many thousands of years. Yet in the world based on the culture of heart, we can reach that destination right away. This is possible only through true love. Thank you, Heavenly Honey. Our ideal is to perfect the world of a culture of heart. There is only one culture, not two, Father said. The cultures of the fallen world are complex and varied. Without establishing the world based on the culture of heart, there is no way for us to connect to heaven on all levels, from the individual to family, tribal, people, nation, and world, and eternal world. Without connecting these as one world of heart, the individual, family, tribe, nation, and world cannot be connected. The heart is the only link capable of connecting the family to the tribe, uh, the, the tribe to the nation, the nation to the world, and the, the world to God. This is as if if an individual who does not keep the true lineage of God cannot establish an ideal family, country, and world. Therefore, the culture of a heart is achieved by keeping absolute purity. You know the, you know the word, it comes from the lineage of God. Without a world based on the culture of a heart, there is no way for us to make connection from the individual up to cosmos. The world thus far has been going up and down in a zigzag fashion. And that is why it has not yet been able to reach the final destination, even after many thousands of years. Yet, in the world based on the culture of heart, we cannot reach that destination right away. This is possible only through true love, Father said. Very, very important point, Father said. Why, you know, without keeping absolute purity, you how can we can become individual perfection? Centering on heart. So without keeping purity, what are you talking about? Ideal family? What are you talking about? Ideal tribe? What are you talking about? Ideal nation and war? That's why one father talking about the war of the culture of heart you know, can connect the eight stages of heaven. It begins from keeping absolutely God's royal blood lineage, which is a really pure blood lineage. Very important, you know? You know, to reach to the God level, from individual level to family level, to nation level, worldwide level, and cosmic, and finally God's level, it begins from keeping absolute purity. So how to build the world of the culture of a heart? It begins from keeping absolute God's royal blood lineage. Wow, Father talking about it essentially, fundamentally, you know, that's why I think this is one of the really most important tradition in our movement. Continue, Heavenly Honey. Only by receiving the blessing for the three generations can we connect to the original lineage. The original lineage is not fallen. The return, to return our lineage to its original state, we need to sever ourselves from Satan's lineage and restore our lineage through indemnity. For this, we need to be engrafted. When our fallen root is pulled out and we are engrafted, 
the seeds of the original lineage will emerge after three generations. These seeds from the fruit of the engrafted tree should be planted and grow into original true olive trees. This takes three generations to complete. Only after the third generation has passed will the seeds that are collected and then planted become true olive trees. It is like passing through three ages. I think Father today, he's talking about a very important thing. I think our brothers and sisters, please remind uh, just now what, what Father saying. This is really important point. Father say that the original lineage is not fallen. To return our lineage to its original state, we need to sever ourselves from Satan's lineage and restore our lineage through the indemnity. For this, we need to be engrafted by the Messiah. Fallen human beings need, needs to be engrafted through the Messiah. After you receive the blessing, understand that the seeds of the original lineage will emerge after second and third generations. Wow. All fallen people need to grow into original true olive trees. This takes three generations to complete. Wow. My brothers and sisters, we are talking about the four realms of heart, three great kingship. We are talking about three generations to complete. When we receive the blessing and then pass through the three generations, then, then our generation really can become real olive tree, not false olive tree, real and original true olive trees. It takes uh, three generations to complete. That's why my brother says, the father always saying that, always the number second is the problem, growth stage is the problem. First generation, we are the one who know God and divine principle and true parents, they are the Messiah, and we accept and we receive the blessing. We engraft, we, we are, we, we are engrafted through the uh, true parents. However, you know, the growth stage, the second generation, this is a really you and me. We are really challenged to educate our second generation for them to keep absolute purity. This is really challenging. However, when you overcome growth stage, when you overcome second generation's issue, then third generation, no problem. That's why father saying that if you, you are centering on you, first generation, second generation, third generation, if three generation keep absolute purity, then father said, then from that time, your number four, from fourth generation, you can see what is the real and original true olive tree. Wow. I really educate day and night my children, our three generations, four realms of heart, and three generations, I emphasize them over and over and again and again and again. Father say clearly today, we have to become true olive tree. You know, to become original true olive tree, it takes three generations, three generations to, uh, to complete. Then based on that, really we can build real about that culture of heart. You know, need to cultivate from first generation to second generation, need to cultivate more our heart and then become third generation. So third generation, so you need to wait until your last grandson or granddaughter to receive blessing. That's why all 
your three, the three generations, everybody keep absolute purity. And you can say, I am completed, I am concluded, I am perfected. Wow. This one is most important, our legacy. We need to inherit. We need to keep true parents and legacy. Three generations until the last grandchild receiving blessing. How can we educate? Otherwise, we cannot talk about the culture of our heart. And Father saying that because of transition time period, he can see problems here and there all over the world. That's why true parents give opportunity again and again, drink holy wine again and fix the problem again and again and again. Can much delay. If some of our second generation, third generation could not keep could not keep purity, and then catch problems, delay and delay, centering on your own generations. Anyway, we cannot give up, no matter what. Some cases really sacrificial case. So, even though you have that kind of problem with your generation. You are second generation, you are with your children, and we're not just only worry and worry and worry. No matter what, we need to fix the problem. We need to pray. We need to put our tongues on. And we really need to have a desperate spirit how to save our second generation again and again. You know, this is really most important. Our heavenly parents, and true parents' and legacy. Only after third generation has passed, will the seed that are collected and then planted become true olive trees. At the very least, we must receive the blessing and pass through three ages. Today's youth ministry, what is everyone's responsibility as a believer? The first responsibility is to be certain, make sure about whether my thoughts and actions come from God or whether they are centered on myself. God's word to do or done are words that make me aware of who I belong to. You know what's the human portion of responsibility? How to distinguish? How can we know what's the human portion of responsibility? And Heavenly Father give the commandment to Adam and Eve. Do not eat or eat. Do it or don't do it. They say, what's our human portion of responsibility? Follow God's word. Do it or don't do it. Eat or do not eat. That's why you need to know, uh, you know, how to distinguish what is good and evil. You need to think, eat or do not eat. Do it or don't do it. That is a human portion of responsibility. Whenever God give us the command, we need to follow that command. Do it or don't do it. Ten commandments say, don't do it, do it, don't do it, do it. Something like that. That's why, you know, when we join our movement, we need to know very clearly, do it or don't do it, according to God's word. Just a simple what is my portion of responsibility? What is my portion of responsibility as a believer? Do it or don't do it. What is evil? What is goodness? You need to distinguish. You need to separate. This is my portion of responsibility. How to separate? How to distinguish good and evil? You know, always a human being follow the physical desires, right? Whenever we follow the physical desires and then connect to the Satan. Not easy to, not even though we, our mindset knows, 
what is the what is the good side, what is the evil side? Not easy, not easy to follow, not easy to take action. Even oh, always following the physical desires. And then connect to Satan more. How about you are following physical desire much easier or following the original mind more easier? For, for example, when you have a meal and you eat one more spoon, this is a physical desire, you are original mind desire. Original mind says, do not eat anymore, already enough. But without noticing, just eat and eat and eat. This is a following the or your original mind or you're following your physical desires. Even small things, even small things, we already have it without noticing. Just to follow the physical desires. This is the really problem. Follow the physical desire, ignore your original mind, ignore your the warning of the, your original mind, and finally connect to the Satan. Even simple things. That's why you need to ask God, you ask your original mind, do it or don't do it? Original mind, my original mind said, don't do it, then don't do it. Original mind said, do it, then do it. That is basically our portion of this responsibility as a believer. But it's really not a simple matter. Always following and then lay down regret. And eat too much and then lay down regret. You know, temporarily, your physical body is so happy. But lay down, you regret so much. You commit sin, sexual sin, whatever, and it's commit sin, then in the temporarily you are happy. However, lay down, Regret and again and again and again and again. Repeat the same things again and again and again. What is everyone's responsibility as a believer? First of all, you need to distinguish what is good and what is evil. What is the original, what is the desire of the original mind? What is the desire of the physical mind? You need to you need to separate, you need to distinguish what is good and what is evil, what is your physical desire, what is the original mind desire. And then need to follow the original mind, need to follow the God's command, need to follow the God's word. Oh distinguish it, it begins from my portion of responsibility. Even if we look at God's work, uh, God's work of restoration, we know that if we live with an uh, interest in belonging to God, He will always guide us. So first of all, we need to separate. Do it or don't do it. Adam and Eve, God said, do not eat. And the archangel said, you need to eat. It's okay. Then when they are confusion, then what to do? When you are confusion, then you need to ask. You need to ask. You need to deny yourself. You are, when you are very much confusion, what is good, what is evil, you need to ask you are able. When you, and you come down, ask the original mind, do it or don't do it. Eat or do not eat. Why without asking? You follow your physical desire. That's the fall. When you decide, when you try to think what is good, what is evil, when you try to distinguish and try to separate from the evil, then based on that comes the determination, then Heavenly Father will guide you. The problem is without distinguish, without separation, just do it. That is the problem. That's the, that is the reason Heavenly Father cannot guide us. Separation, distinguish, uh, distinguish, good and evil, that is um, our portion of responsibility. Today, we have received a clear command to live, belong to God. Know with a certainty that our life today is a life commanded by God. The second responsibility is to have a God-centered desire and wishes. You know, to have a parent and child relationship with God. 
The problem is that even though we believe, live in the embrace of God, we do not live according to God's desire and wishes. Or rather, we live centered on our own thoughts. And every morning we are listening God's guidance. Do it or don't do it. However, even though we know, even though our original mind know, but always follow the physical desire. Finally, our physical desire win. Our spirit, our spirit always defeated by physical desires. That is our agony as a fallen man. Jesus' disciples lived with Jesus, Jesus, but did not know what his desires were, although they heard the words of Jesus through ears. They could not relate with his heart, so they lived according to their own thoughts. Fallen man's heart might want or might want it, but because they live according to their physical body's desires, they cannot receive the goodness of God's words and relate to God. Such a person is unable to carry out God's command even after receiving them. For example, even though Jesus said to pity those who are pitiful, since it does not well up from the heart, it cannot be put into practice. Even after receiving Jesus' command, the disciples did not feel it artistically, so they just listened and flowed away. Jesus said, my soul is deeply grieved. Now I am caught. I am now going to the cross. But his disciples listened and then slept. They only heard Jesus' voice of pain, but they fell asleep. Only when God's desire and my desire become the same, can I form a parent and child relationship with God. This is an important point. What is my portion of responsibility? You need to separate what is the good and evil. Do it or don't do it. Secondly, I need to follow, I need to live according to God's desires, according to God's wishes. That is my portion of responsibility. What is God's wish? At present moment, what is his wish? What are he asking me to do? Always need to ask God's guidance. Always need to know what is God's wish. That is my portion of responsibility. When we think through a mother, what is her wishes? When we think about through a father, what is his wishes? Not just only separate good and evil. You need to know. What the parents wish? What the God wishes? God wishes ask us to fulfill, you know, three blessings: first blessing, second blessing, and third blessing. When we think about the God wishes, I can keep my first motivation. His wishes, my wishes. His desire is my desire. That is our portion of responsibility. When I do as God tells me to do. I relate to his heart and form a parent and child relationship with him. The problem is that we always say that we are centered on God, but in the end, we live centered on our own selves. This is the pain of our life of faith. I must live according to my heart's desire. But when I am actually unable to, I feel pain and cry. This is because there is an element of unwanted injustice within. My brothers and sisters, really true parents' guidance is really amazing. What is everyone's responsibility as a believer? You need to really split what is good and what is evil. What should I do? What I should not do? Do it or don't do it. Eat or do not eat. Need to distinguish you first. Secondly, I need to absolutely follow according to God's wishes, 
God to desire. That is our portion of responsibility as a believers. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Young. I think this is a very uh, impactful message today. Having purity through obeying God and our conscience and, you know, having a, a daily regular practice of asking, you know, would God want me to do this? Yes or no. And it's, it's simple, but it's a question we need to ask um, multiple times a day. So we thank you for that. Let's now go into our breakouts and share our reflections with one another. See you back soon.
Emily, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed your breakout. It's funny, I have my, my family popping in and out through this door once a week since they're so still jet lagged from Japan. Uh, let's uh, invite up first uh, Mrs. Andrea Thiemann. Would you share first your reflection? Yes, good morning, Dr. Young. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Um, yeah, it was such a pleasure to meet Dr. Young yesterday at the CSF. Uh, it just came up to oh. me it's like, oh, <laughs> my morning devotion team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I could see that you really, you know, mean it when you say that it's your hobby, you know, to meet people. And, and I could feel that, Dr. Young. So thank you so much for your hearts. Thank you. Yeah, uh, just now, the you know, I talk about the keeping absolute pure Buddha lineage, uh, I'd like to remind you, my brothers and sisters, to keep a pure Buddha lineage, not just your own generation, second generation, until third generation. This is a really, really challenging. Even God himself a challenge. Can you imagine? We are fallen human being, accumulated six thousand years for the nature and because of true parents all of a sudden change from servant's blood lineage to God's blood lineage even God he himself really really challenging even true parents are so much challenging however even though really challenging and anyway, we need to do it we need to do it. Of course, there is many sacrificial cases, there are many problem cases, but we need to do it without giving up, my brothers and sisters, to not depress. And then, you know, even though challenging, some sometimes very much fearful, you know, sometimes feel like a conscious guilty feeling. However, this is a reality, my brothers and sisters. We are the one who need to settle down. You know, it took 6,000 years, challenging to, to reach that level. Not simple, I know. But without giving up, my dear brothers and sisters, keep going. And having problem, need to fix it, even though it takes time with our tears and sweat and blood. Heavenly Father, I cannot settle down by my own self. I need to have your strength and power, Heavenly Father. We need to really beg to have any parents. Aju? Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure, Andrea, if you wanted to share your reflection. Um, but this point, I think, is really important. And it reminds me of something you, you taught before, Dr. Young, about with your purity, 
God absolutely can reach every child, you know, at, at, between a certain age, you know, adolescence age. And so I think it's important for all of our second gen, third gen, to, to, to have that purity, then God can really come down. But if, there's, if, they, if they don't have that purity, they might miss it, miss that window. Not that it's, you know, it's, it's impossible to, to recover, but uh, yeah, let's do our best for our, for our children. And uh, to share next, I'm looking over here at uh, Kana or Kasa. Would you be able to share next? Uh, yeah, I was, uh, I was thinking about, you know, we now know that it's not the age of prison anymore. And even if we that we believe your parents and have a parent and we're just, you know, going to church and thinking, oh, we are doing our responsibility. But then if you really look back at Jesus's time, those believers, they thought they were uh, following Jesus. But now that after history, we look back at how much they really follow Jesus. It really goes down to their heart. And then they weren't fulfilling it. And so I'm just, I, it just made me really think if our descendants, they look back on how we're following true parents and really believing heavenly parent and true parents then they might see that we didn't fulfill our responsibility. So I really think that these, if you just narrow it down to these few points, we really need to check ourselves every day. Are we really distinguishing good and evil? And are we really one in heart? Is our wish the same as true parents and heavenly parents? So I think that, yeah, it's not easy. Portion of responsibility isn't easy, but mm. we can really make 100% effort to fulfill uh. it. Thank you, thank you, Kanan. Kana, uh, yeah, I really appreciate your such a beautiful heart and devotion. You already received the blessing with the African guy. You are prepared to go to Africa as a missionary. And also you helping me time to time, translation from Korean PowerPoint to English. I really so much, you know, indebted to you. Thank you, Kana Orikasa, for your beautiful sharing. 감사합니다. Thank you, Kana. All right. And let's now go to our reminders this morning. Number one, as we well know, please invite someone to join us here on the Zoom call uh, for morning devotion to really get the spirit and, and jolts of love each morning. And to joyfully give from your heart, consider offering a donation to support Morning Devotion uh, so we can continue this ministry for at least the next seven years. And to give us a musical offering, uh, I'm excited to welcome back up here, uh, Mr. Lawrence Bear. So let's welcome him up. Yay. Hi, Dr. Young. Uh, oh. Hello, Lawrence Bay again. Thank you. I, I hope you don't get bored with my music. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, first I want to give a big uh, shout out to Tal. Uh, this song was supposed to be uh, later in the week, and she's got a real amazing connection. And uh, so she said, no, we should do it today. And uh, uh, it, it totally relates to your topic, uh, you know, yeah, in terms of yeah. the arts. This was a this is a song that, you know, was a winner in the Channel Gook uh, Holy Song Award. Uh, but but also it talks about building a culture of heart and talks about separating good from evil. So yeah. it, everything that you talked about. Uh, yeah, you know, I see. So wow. I, I'm so uh, grateful and, and honored. Very timely. Very good. It's Tal. It, it, it Tal is amazing. Mm -hmm. Share your vows, share your rings, stepping forth, spread your wings, feeling free, feel the joy as you soar. Raise your hopes, raise your eyes on your dreams, on the skies, love of two, bound as one. 
evermore So much adventure So much to learn So many friends still to find Start each day with grateful heart Never stray too far apart Live in grace, live in all, live in love Show your standard, shine your light Know the wrong, seek the right Life is sacred, life is fleeting Use it well Never back off from a challenge Hold your ground, use your talent Don't count losses in the moment Time will tell So much to contribute So much to build So many lives still to touch the strength for one another be the peace be the lover live in grace live in all live in love and oh life is fine each living creature Reflects the divine And though life is sweet Each moment a gift That will never repeat
Oh, Lawrence Bear, thank you. With beautiful photos. Wow. Thank you. Great music. Wow. Thank you so much. Well done. Yes, that was a really nice one. Yeah, a real hit. Thank you. Uh, let's have a closing prayer from uh, Dr. Shimyo. Would you pray for us to close? I'll mute first. Our Heavenly Parent, such a wonderful morning. We are able to start with the morning devotion. The contents of morning devotion gave us a great impact and we are now new, renewed, and we are different. Thanks to this time of morning devotion, which is conducted our, by our beloved leader, Dr. Yon, and from our true mother's memoir, and from our true father's words, and from the portion of youth ministry, we have gained a lot. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that we all are able to live today in a heavenly way and wonderful way and we only hope that we'll be able to bear fruit as a result of these wonderful times heavenly parent thank you thank you so much for this wonderful morning and please give your further blessing and guidance to all the brothers and sisters throughout the nation throughout the continent and throughout the world also you are blessing also to our beloved leader, Dr. Yon. Thank you so much again. And I want to offer this prayer in gratitude in the name of Theodore and Smye, um, Shimyo, Blessed Center family. Aju. Aju. Thank you, Dr. Shinmyo, Mrs. Shinmyo. Kamsahamida. You are getting younger and younger. My goodness. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Shimio, and for your <laughs> your pure heart and obedience to God always. All right, family, thank you for joining us today for morning devotion. We will see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Thank you, my dear brothers.